HIV in rural Africa is the biggest health challenge on the planet. But here in Malawi, there's an organization that thinks drugs alone are not the answer. I'm Alvin Hall. 25 years on Wall Street have taught me a lot about business. But now, I'm on a new journey around the world, meeting a new breed of entrepreneur, more interested in doing good than making money. Social entrepreneurs. And I want to help. An HIV clinic in remote, rural Malawi. This is one of the poorest countries in Africa. It also has one of the highest HIV infection rates in the world, one in seven adults. This clinic is run by Partners in Health, an organization with a revolutionary way of treating HIV. They think the social problems are as important as the medical ones. Uh, what's amazing is that they're collecting all of this information and you look at this lady's socioeconomic status, education none, number of rooms in the house one, flooring in the house earth, her child is HIV positive, she's HIV positive, and they're both here as a part of the antiviral treatment program offered by Partners in Health. Clearly they are people in need like everyone else here is. PIH was founded in Haiti. Its healthcare model has been tried and tested in some of the world's poorest countries. In Haiti, usually after Jonas Rickadon has come from his native Haiti to help launch their latest program. What is the core mission of PIH? The core mission is that provide preferential option for the poor in healthcare. Why the poor? Because the poor are the one usually marginalized. As partners in health, we provide the comprehensive, high-quality health care to those people. And we believe that providing a preferential option for the poor is the best way to go. Part of a high-quality health care service is a well-equipped hospital. Nano Hospital is nearing completion. Keith Joseph has overseen construction from the beginning. And so all of this was just trees? It was just trees. There was a small ambulance bay which was just being used to store equipment. Mm -hmm. So we, we didn't realize that eventually they would give us more land behind. Yes. We, we kept the hospital here. There was a whole discussion. Partners in Health has been operating for over 20 years. They run health programs in 12 countries. Each year, they raise $65 million in donations, and they serve more than 2 million people. PIH's goal is to keep patients well so they don't have to go to hospital. They're committed to providing care out in the community. Okay. Yeah. How did you find this lady? They seek out patients with the greatest needs, like Edna and her daughter. Both have been recently diagnosed with HIV. They're living in dire straits. Hello. She's been kicked out by her husband, so now they're both effectively homeless. How old is she? She was born in 1992. 1992? Yeah. 1992? Yes. That means she's? That means she's 17. 17 years yeah. old? Yeah. When did she get married? <laughs> I think I was 13 or 14. What kind of person was her husband? He was already grown up when I met him. Ah. And was he abusive to her? If there were no partners in hell, where would she be? Uh, I think uh, there would be a trouble. Yes. Yeah, maybe she would have already died. Yes. Yeah. No. There's one, see? Right there. 
And where's the other one? Here's the other one. Ah! See? Thank you. Thank you. Meeting Edna is really shocking for me. This is the first time I've come face to face with the reality of what it's like to be poor and HIV positive in Africa. Edna's about to start her antiretroviral treatment, but I can't help thinking she'll need far more than just drugs to put her life back together again. Partnison Health has already helped these women. They used to be sex workers and are all HIV positive, but now they're employed by PIH to teach safe sex to anyone and everyone in local bars. And how. But they have greater ambitions. They want to open a restaurant and PIH will help. I find this a surprising proposition, but how will they cope? They've chosen me as manager because I've worked in a restaurant before. Who's going to do the cooking? Florence. <laughs> Florence. <laughs> Florence, you can't be everything, Florence. A restaurant succeeds when everybody has responsibility. So you may want to look at other groups and say, you three will be responsible for the cooking. You can taste the cooking to make sure it's good but you don't do the cooking. Let me see some of the numbers. So this is the startup materials. And where is this money coming from? PIH. Oh, they're making a grant to you. That's very good. So they're helping you get on your feet and becoming sustainable by giving you the money. That's very good. That's very generous. I wish you a lot of luck. Good luck. Good luck to you. And when I come back in November or December, I want to taste your food, OK? It's an ambitious plan by PIH, funding HIV patients to start their own businesses. Outside their new restaurant, their excitement is obvious. This is what all business startups should be like. The essential ingredient is enthusiasm, and these lovely ladies have it in truckloads. For PIH, a steady job is key to good health, and so is a balanced diet. It's yet another of their ambitious goals. They're encouraging people to plant more varied and more nourishing crops, better food to improve people's health and well-being. They call it permaculture. Uh -huh. uh, this is permaculture. OK. Yeah. And permaculture is really bringing back yeah. some of the plants that yeah. had sort of people had stopped using, yes, isn't it? Yes, 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 yes. yes. Okay. Jimmy, who runs the project for PIH, is keen to introduce me to the ladies who are working the land. Hello. Hello. Diana has big plans. So what are you going to plant here? I want to plant tomatoes and cabbage. Cabbage. The staple food here is a maize flower called sima. Ah, oh, she's hungry. It fills stomachs, but has almost no nutritional value. It's just like cornmeal. It's just like the cornmeal we use to fry fish, uh, make cornbread in the South. Hmm. <laughs> Little did I think when I came to Malawi to visit a health program that I would end up in a field planting tomatoes. It's all a part of this extraordinary enterprise. I'm starting to realize that PIH supplies much more than just medical care. This has been the most amazing time I've ever spent with a social entrepreneur organization. And the breadth of programs that you offer, it's phenomenal. 
The specific recommendation that I have for you is related to those wonderful ladies I met who are formal commercial sex workers who are starting a restaurant nearby. Um, I think that is a remarkably good thing you all are doing. But in talking to the ladies, I realized their guidance in opening this restaurant wasn't quite as tight as it should be. They had never thought about such things as uh, table turnover. I didn't get a sense that they really had a sense of the real tight cost of running a restaurant. So it's something I want you to focus on for one reason. I think that that could be an interesting model of success for business. And you could use that to become a playbook a guide, if you will, for other such businesses that you've set up if it's hugely successful. One thing that probably would have, you know, fallen uh, below the radar is, is, you know, recording and keeping track of the experiences you said. Um, we'll definitely take that a a advice and, and, you know, hopefully when you come back in six months, you'll see that we've we followed it and we will have some information that you can look at and, and you know comment on and maybe help guide us further. Life is about taking that experience and turning it into wisdom. And this guidebook or playbook would be the wisdom of this organization. Six months ago, I left Malawi and Partners in Health feeling very optimistic. Now I'm back and meeting Jimmy. He's in charge of a major project growing vegetables to improve the diet of local people. What I expected to see were fields of luscious crops. What happened to them? Okay, now today, because of drought, mm -hmm. yeah, we don't have water yes. for applying the seeds, ah. so it fails to grow. When you saw that it wasn't going well, what did you feel inside? I feel pain. I feel pain, very pain. Mm -hmm. So what would be the solution to your problem? We want to get some boho here, so that we can have enough water for our pemagacha here. And that pemagacha, we are going to teach all, over the, all the people over the area we have got. I'm sorry it didn't work out, Jimmy. Yeah, yeah. This is a big disappointment. Jimmy needs a well to make this project work. I hope that PIH can find the means to build him one. But this is Africa, and creating a better diet will always be an enormous challenge, not something that can be solved overnight. I hope the wonderful women I met setting up their own restaurant are faring better. Look at you! You look so fantastic! Yeah. And what does the name mean? What is the name of the restaurant? Beast. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Oh, look, it's gorgeous. It's really transformed. You must be so happy. Yeah. Yes. This is a world away from how these women used to scrape together a living in the commercial sex trade. We are happy to have a man like Alvin help us cooking. We've never had a man help us before. Oh, you're most welcome. You're most welcome. <laughs> Since my last visit, they have taken my advice and found someone to help Florence run the restaurant. Ivy, mm -hmm. I told Florence and the other ladies that too many cooks spoil the soup. Mm -hmm. So, did they divide up the responsibilities in the restaurant? There are 15 women, mm -hmm. so we divide it. It's like two people cooking, others buying some other things like tomatoes, onions. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How long before this restaurant will be self-sustaining, that it will be able to pay Florence and the other ladies? I think it will take, I think it's at the end of this month. You think by the end of this month? Yeah. Now you told me that your best night is 12 to 14,000 kwacha a night. Yeah. What's your goal for next year? I want, I want to see around 30,000 kwacha. 
To that, double it. Yeah. 30,000 kwachans would make you very happy, I'm sure. It won't be. Yes. Oh, yes, <laughs> yes, very happy. 30,000 kwacha. That's $200. A huge amount here. It looks good. This is a life-changing opportunity, and it's been made possible by Partners in Health. Pretty tasty. I think they have a winner here. But alongside these social programs, PIH is also building hospitals. Last time I was here, this hospital had just been finished. Now patients are being treated. This huge investment comes from a partnership between PIH and the Malawian government. PIH's goal is that in the next five years, the government will take over the running of this hospital, leaving Jonas to start up new projects elsewhere. But meanwhile, Jonas and his colleague Keith have their hands full with their social programs. So let's look at some of the challenges that I gave you. I specifically talked about the ladies who wanted to open the new restaurant. They actually told me that Partners in Health did one of the things that I recommended, which was to provide them with basic bookkeeping and basic management skills. You know, it was a good suggestion. We knew that they would need that sort of help. Um, Although they had been going to some classes on business development, uh, we're trying to make simple processes for them to keep track of things. Have you all been working to create anything that will allow people to benefit from your experience and your experience? Since you've been here last, Partners in Health has been developing a manual uh, based on the experiences that we've used, partly to benefit ourselves, but mostly also to have uh, the experience down so that other people who are developing NGOs or have NGOs that are doing similar work can see what we've done and see whether it's useful to them. We think, of course, that it would be. You've worked in Haiti, Rwanda, Lesotho, and now in Malawi. Putting together these organizations, you put together the one in Lesotho from ground zero. If you had a book to help you know how to do this, would that be useful to you? Yeah, I think so, because I have learned from Haiti, and we, we try to uh, correct some mistakes we have made in Haiti, in Lesotho, and then from Malawi, we have learned more again. But I think when we put all together, we finally think we have been uh, getting a lot. I think this will be one of the most useful things for this organization. In the six months since we met, I have thought about this over and over and over again in terms of partners in health. Because if you all did that one thing, I think it would add something, not only to the efficiency of the organization, but it would also create a wealth of corporate knowledge and corporate wisdom, something that is invaluable. My admiration for partners in health is boundless especially with all the extra work they are now doing in their heartland of Haiti following the devastating earthquake there. But my big question is, does all this work actually make the most needy people healthier? People like Edna and her daughter, both HIV positive. I'm very concerned about them. Hey! Hello! How are you? Hello! Yes! Hello! My God, look at how good she looks. Yes, hello, my goodness. Haven't, I cannot believe this. Look at you, you've gained so much weight. <laughs> look at you, it's so good to see you. It's wonderful to see hey, you. Do you remember Edna? Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah I remember good. she's gained so much weight. Yeah. Huh? Keys? Mm -hmm. You have, let's know. see. You have your own house? I have a new house. Can I see it? Oh, good. Yes, let's go. Well, let's run. Let's go see the house. Oh, I love this. Oh, my goodness. Oh, look at this, Edna. Oh, my goodness. Hello. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Eunice has her own bedroom. Yeah. The mother has her own bedroom here. Proper housing is one of the foundations of PIH's social programs. For them, 
Health isn't just about medication. It's also about education, jobs, homes, and more. I wanted to know how Edna's incredible improvement had come about. After you were here, I went to the hospital. I saw the doctor and they gave me medication. And they gave me all types of foods so that the medication would really work. You must have been really happy when you found out you were going to get this house. When I moved in, I sang a song about how happy I am. Now I will not have to sleep in a house with a leaking roof. Edna's story is like so many of the patients here. All these HIV-positive people are strong again, many with homes and jobs. But best of all, there's a real sense of belonging and community. Despite the inevitable ups and downs, I'm confident that Partners in Health will revolutionize many people's lives in this country and in many others long into the future. Next time, I'll be in Cambodia. Can a generation of children be saved from the poverty, drugs, and violence of life on the street? Yeah.